Welcome back to the channel. Oh. Yeah, today we have another really exciting throwback review for everybody. Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. Oh yeah. Uh, same with all of our throwback reviews. Uh, this is running on a PS4 Pro and there will be spoilers ahead. So yeah, if you somehow haven't played this game yet, uh, might not be the right video for you. It's been out for quite a while, but mm. Yeah, let's go ahead and get into our thoughts on this one. Mm. Um, yeah, how'd you think of the game? Mm. I like it. Mm. And uh, it's very activity. Active. Mm. You know, jump, climb, swing. Not swim a lot. Yeah. yeah. And find the hidden boxes. Yeah, lots of like hidden boxes, hidden treasures in this game. And I would say too, you know, it, when this game came out, it was really a big shock for me because it is a departure from the old Tomb Raider style of games. Oh. Uh, but this definitely has a open world kind of feel to it mm. where you're kind of traversing this island and... It's a pretty big island though. Yeah. Mm. I'll say the uh, the story is very unique in this game too. It has to deal with this Japanese princess, Himiko, mm -hmm. and yeah, you're kind of trying to find Himiko's tomb, and ultimately, you're not the only one. Yeah, there's another group of people. Yeah, this island kind of attracts these boats and ships and airplanes and helicopters and they all crash on this island. The island has been cursed. Yeah, kind of Himiko's curse. Mm. Um, Himiko, yeah, ultimately is kind of trying to come alive again. And one of your uh, members of the team, Sam, um, the other survivors on the island are trying to make Sam the new Himiko, which yeah. Lara. We'll have none of it. Yeah, she has been chosen mm -hmm. to be the next the princess, right? Right, right. Yeah. Then Sarah tried to save her. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's quite the adventure saving Sam and the whole crew and getting off the island. You know, the game closes, of course, where you finally do get off the island. You couldn't have Lara Croft adventuring all these other places and mm. she you know, stays on this island forever, but um, it definitely is a, quite the journey. Yeah, it's very like uh, they even have when you find a book mm -hmm. of the journey, you can read it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, lots of lots of like hidden journals and yeah. a story that you can soak in in this game. Mm. And uh, we didn't, I didn't read all of them, mm -hmm. but with some of it, mm -hmm. it's kind of like trying to explain to you how this happened. Right. And what happened to this island. Right. Yeah. And I will say, you know, from a gameplay standpoint, I would say this is one of the most active Tomb Raider games um, I've played. More of a focus on combat, at least with the mechanics. Mm. Uh, you know, you have a bow and arrow in this game, it's introduced to Lara. So, yeah, I actually really enjoy the bow and arrow in the game. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> I can't aim, you know? It's mm. right when panic or something, everything's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I will say, you know, that's definitely something about the game. There mm. is a challenge to it. Um, I think all Tomb Raider games are, they have a challenge to them on differing scales depending on the game. But this one really introduced these kind of, not just physics-based puzzles, but elemental style puzzles where mm. you really need to use fire quite a bit, um, as well as the weapons in the game kind of double, um, and you gain these different kind of upgrades for them, making it kind of an action RPG in a way, where you have to gain these skill points, and then go to your base camp and upgrade your weapons in whichever order you'd like. Mm, and your skills. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the skills you need to upgrade to, mm -hmm. to survive in this island. And uh, the part I like it when I find any the hidden items, the boxes, mm -hmm. when I open them, feel happy. Yeah. Or the one, you know, hanging hanging on and you have to fire uh -huh. fire it and drop the box. Yeah. Yeah, that makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> to find all the boxes. 
Absolutely. Yeah, and I think there were a lot of moments where I would just look at Yajing while she was playing this game and she had this like sense of wonder in her eyes. Because, you know, we've played some open world games that we've reviewed on the channel, like Shadow of the Colossus and Journey. Um, I don't know if you'd really call Journey an open world game, but this one is definitely a very kind of living open world. Mm, very. And, uh, but we, we didn't use it, you know, the camp. Mm -hmm. You can use the, what, what's the, the tool? We can go back to the... Uh -huh. Fast travel. Um, yeah, fast travel. We haven't used that. Yeah, in yeah. this playthrough, um, yeah, we didn't use any fast travel. We mm. just went there manually. Mm. Um, and I think that's also partially because Yajing and I, we were passing the controller on this playthrough. Yeah. And yeah, I beat this game on PlayStation 3. I'd beaten it twice already on the PlayStation 4 Pro. And this was Yajing's first playthrough that we kind of shared together. Mm. Um, so I, I kind of knew where to go and how to get there. Mm. But with that said, I, I do really enjoy the fluidity of the animation in the game. There's mm. tons of animation. I like the progression that you feel when you're upgrading your weapons and mm -hmm. your tools um, all the way up until the end of the game, really. You keep getting these upgrades. Yeah. I'm happy I play with you. Yeah. I can pass controller because I I couldn't stay calm when a lot of the em enemies come to me. Mm. And I just like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> and he's such a calm, you know. He was just like, you see how calm I am? <laughs> one by one at a time. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that actually brings us to the sound design in the game because, you know, the music's wonderful. Um, you know, the way I think about it, I really enjoy the music in this game. Um, but yeah, for you, what did we have to do? Uh, we turn off the music. Yeah. Yeah, I want to say maybe like an hour into the game, um, we went into the options because Ya Jing was definitely feeling these orchestral scores that they throw at you, and it really builds your tension in the game. Um, and if you've been watching our review videos on the channel before, I always mention it's a pro tip. You can, if you're getting really stressed out while you're playing the game, or it's giving you anxiety, or like re making you really afraid, uh, some people really love that. I don't mind it, but sometimes, yeah, if, it's, if you just don't want to deal with that kind of pressure, you can turn the sound off. Um, and we kept some of the sounds on. Yeah. Just the music of the game we turned yeah, off. Yeah, only the music. Mm. I think. It music and the, the volumes of the enemies was affecting me a lot to mm -hmm. start panic and uh, yeah i just like turn it off it helps a little bit but mm -hmm. still i don't know why this game has so many enemies come all at once mm -hmm. and i try to stay calm i right. did but they just keep they just like keep shooting <laughs> <laughs> There's no, like, I don't have a chance to survive, making me feel like. Yeah. Well, I will say too, um, you know, this, uh, if you're new to the channel, this is kind of Ya Jing's first run of playing video games, kind of in her life. If you've been looking at the channel, these are really all of the games in order that she's been playing. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to build her up to these kinds of more complicated games where you have to, you know, aim and move while you're actually um, yeah, shooting or jumping and platforming and just being really nimble and active. Mm. Um, so I thought it was really interesting to see you play because you're definitely getting better and better at video games. Yeah, thank you. Mm. And uh, I like this game. Well, the enemy part I don't like it, but the way mm. I like it is um, I think after the previous some of the games, I think I earned a little bit of skill right. and I feel more comfortable and more confidence mm. to play it like through everything. When the enemy not a lot, I just like, okay, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, very cool. And, you know, I, I think one other kind of final thing to touch on about the game is just the graphics. Um, you know, you're looking at the Definitive Edition running on a PS4 Pro 
and I played it on PS3 when it came out, and I have to say it's definitely way better looking on PS4 Pro than it was on PlayStation 3. Mm. So I think it really depends on you know the machine that you're running it on. I know it's also on Xbox platforms and mm. PC, um, but I think it looks great on PS4 Pro. Definitely, yeah, I like the graphic a lot. Mm. Um, and another thing I want to say is not. It's not about the graphic, it's mm. about how two people play this game. Yeah. Um, because I remember when I passed the controller to you, mm. and uh, you are when you are playing, I feel like I can calm down mm. and I see the stuff right. you don't see. It seemed to me when you are right next to you and I'm the one who who is who was playing. Mm. The other person always can see something. Right. The player wasn't able to. This is amazing part. Yeah, that's a really good point. And you know, I I never really noticed it until we started playing games together because I would just play games alone and you're very active in the game, but yeah, when she was playing the game, I could really focus on the graphics and kind of take in the game a lot more and notice those things like, oh, Yajing, there's something over there on your left that you didn't, you know, pick up. And she did the same thing for me because yeah, I think there's just things you don't notice while you're playing um, that just an extra set of eyes is really helpful yeah, for. Yeah, and the way we were playing, mm. especially when we face a lot of the enemies, that time I simply can calm down and I can tell you where are they, mm -hmm. from which angle, and uh, but when I was the one as a player, I mm. couldn't see any mm. any enemies in the game. I just like oh, I'm so panic, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so freak out. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird feeling. No, definitely. Oh, I'm right. I uh, I think with that. We're ready to review it. Mm. Um, so yeah, I have to ask, out of five stars, what would you rate Tomb Raider, the definitive edition? I want to give it four. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. I was actually going to give it a 4.2. Um, I think it's a really good game. It is. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I just want to say, somehow the story, mm -hmm. the team members were nice too. <laughs> yeah, but... Yeah, you, you know, again, because it's a spoiler review, yeah, your team members don't all come back. And mm -hmm. yeah, some of them are pretty mean. Yeah, they blame to Sarah a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that gives us a 4.1 out of 5 star review for Tomb Raider, the definitive edition. I really would recommend this game uh, if, you're, if you've been playing games for a little while and you never got into the Tomb Raider series. Um, or you just want to have something that has a nice, complex world, um, you could do a lot worse uh, than picking up Tomb Raider, the definitive edition. Thanks for uh, stopping by the channel today. As always, we really appreciate you stopping by and checking out our throwback reviews. Uh, we will have another travel video from South Korea for you later this week. Please enjoy and please let us know how you like this game and have you played it before and how how you like planned this game yeah yeah, yeah we haven't platinumed it I mean, mm -hmm. yeah if you've platinumed it let us know and we can't wait to hear your thoughts yeah we will see you next time thanks everyone bye bye